This is a video review on the Lenovo ThinkPad T570 laptop for use in 2023 and onward. This model in particular has an Intel Core i5-6300U CPU at 2.40 GHz, uh, 2 cores, 4 threads, 16 GB of Samsung DDR4, 2133 MHz RAM, and I have a Timetech MS09 512GB NVMe solid state drive. There is Intel Dual Band Wireless AC8260 with Bluetooth 4.0, and the integrated graphics are Intel HD 520. And I'm fortunate that this lot of T570s came with a 1920x1080 display panel, making for a very nice experience. I should also note that the display panel is 15.6 inches. We have the uh, chiclet style keyboard indicative of this generation of ThinkPad, of course with the red track point. And something that I rather like, and is not included on my personal daily driver T480S, is the numpad. I do kind of miss it, and I also really like having the one button access to the calculator. And this is also a two-tiered backlit keyboard. The three-button touchpad is something I actually really enjoy, especially if you're using the red track point. On the product specification sheet, it is described as being a buttonless Mylar Surface multi-touch touchpad, so that's what that is. The top of the case is the durable glass fiber reinforced plastic. The bottom of the case is of the same material, and as you can see here, I did get the 6-cell version of the lithium-ion battery. Also featured is what I assume to be grills for speakers and passive air cooling. Also, we do have the port for the optional docking bay, or if you're so inclined, you can get one of these ThinkPad-branded docking stations that I have connected to my workstation that you can connect via USB 3.0, and it offers five USB 3.0 ports, two DVI display ports, um, Ethernet port, and microphone and headphone input. Pretty handy. Here on the left I.O. of the laptop, we have headphone and microphone input, 4-in-1 multi-card reader, SD card reader, USB 3.1, USB 3.0, always on for charging things like your cell phone when the laptop is in sleep mode, an HDMI port, RJ45 Ethernet port, and the version of the Kensington lock. On the right I.O. we have the power adapter input, USB 3.1 Thunderbolt port that is a grill for air exhaust from the CPU fan, and the optional smart card reader. And we have the standard 720p webcam. As for general performance, I find with the included NVMe solid state drive and 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, it's pretty snappy, re very responsive. You can get to looking up images very fast, and you can also watch YouTube videos in full 1080p resolution. For the type of video editing that I do, which is in 1080p resolution, this laptop will work perfectly fine with the uh, Movavi video suite that I use for editing. Um, this could also be used for a variety of different business uses. Of course, uh, Office 365, etc. would run just fine. And for the type of work that I do um, outside of this at my day job, it would work perfectly fine as a daily driver. The stock HD audio stereo speakers with the Realtek codec are actually pretty decent on this laptop. Of course, you can always connect to a Bluetooth speaker for a better experience. So let's take a look beneath the case. And first, let's remove the battery. And you'll just need a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screws. Don't be alarmed if the screws do not come out, they are held in by a washer. And now to remove the back panel, you'll need something like a plastic guitar pick to score um, between the palm rest and the back panel without scratching the material. So here we have the 2.5 inch hard drive or solid state drive bay. In this case, we have a NVMe adapter and this is connected by ribbon cable to the motherboard. And you can see here, there's the 512 gigabyte Timetech NVMe SSD. And beneath this little metal shroud are two little heat pads, which is kind of a nice inclusion. 
Over here we have the spot for the internal battery. Unfortunately, this model did not ship with one installed. Um, instead, we just have a metal bracket as a holding piece. And I'm pleased to note that there are two DIMM slots and you can install, according to the spec sheet, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. As I mentioned earlier, we currently have 16 gigabytes installed. Over here we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card and right beside it we have an M.2 slot which you can install a which you can install an additional solid state drive for extra storage or as a boot drive or a WWAN card. And over here is the heat pipe from the CPU leading to the exhaust fan. It's fairly easy access, just four screws if you want to remove it to replace the thermal paste. I also wanted to note that underneath the area where the internal battery would sit is easy access to the rear of where the touchpad is fastened in by these four screws. Um, that means that replacement of the touchpad is fairly easy. With uh, previous models you did have to lift up the entire motherboard to access the touchpad. In this case it's fairly easy to install if you need a replacement. Alright, I have my Steam Gaming SSD loaded up in this handy hard drive reader connected to the laptop. Uh, let's test out some gaming, but first let's try out the free offering from Epic Games, Fortnite. Alright, so I've set the resolution to 1280 by 720 and lowered the 3D resolution as well just to get better performance and higher frames per second. Let's see how well this performs. Okay, so just running around, we're averaging uh, mid 30s to mid 40s frames per second. All right, so performance is not bad, certainly playable. All right, so. Maybe if you're into a uh, competition, might not be the right system for you, but for casual playing and uh, for a guy like me, it's totally fine. Um, I actually reached a uh, pretty good frames per second, I would say, uh, getting up to the mid 50s. And that's certainly good enough for me. I will consider this game playable. All right, so something a little more applicable to the system is Left 4 Dead 2. All right, so this game looks really good on the 1080p panel. And yeah, uh, not too surprised that it's running pretty well. We're already getting over 70 frames per second. All right, so just running around, we're still averaging uh, mid 60s to 70s frames per second. Let's get some action on the screen. This game is totally playable on the T570 with Intel HD 520. You could definitely play this with friends, um, play through the whole campaign and have a pretty smooth experience. Um, at least that's my judgment. So we'll mark this off as totally playable. All right, so I have Dark Forces loaded up because you can do a ton of gaming on the lower end and a lot of really, really good indie titles. So of course this game is going to run totally fine, uh, you don't have to really worry about it. But I just thought I would show it off. Just to show that there are a variety of games that you can play on a system like this. As I've already stated and have a really good time doing so. So yeah, I would definitely mark this off as playable and consider it a good choice to play on this system. So would I recommend the Lenovo ThinkPad T570 laptop for use in 2023 and onward? Absolutely, um, especially for general use, everyday use like web surfing, video watching, video streaming, conference calls, etc. Work as a daily driver or some light gaming. I think so long as you manage your expectations, you can get a lot of mileage out of a laptop like this um, in 2023 without having to break the bank on something brand new. As well, if you are looking at cheaper new notebook PCs, do consider that though this is slightly older, um, it will pack more performance than a cheap notebook off the shelf. I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, ThinkPads are incredibly durable and long lasting. 
So hopefully this video helped you decide if the T570 is the right laptop for you. Um, if you feel like I missed anything important or if you feel that you want to add something, feel free to leave a comment below and I will probably get back to you as I usually do. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching and hopefully this helped you out in some way. Alright, have a nice day.